This is part two of the September 2013 matric RT paper one exam for the Eastern Cape. And we're dealing with question one. Uh, we do the second part of question one, the SQL question. Um, we get into the rest of these questions where they become a little bit more difficult and the mark allocation is a lot higher. Although with this question, if you if you look at the mark allocation, it's only two marks. But there was actually a mistake. If you totaled all of the marks up, you would notice that it doesn't add up to what the total is for the for the whole of question one. And they made a mistake here because if you look in the actual memo, they say this this question is actually four marks. Technically, it should actually be five marks, and I'll tell you why when I get to that part. But we need to complete the code for the boys and ball skills button. And we need to find out how many boys have enrolled. So we basically are to find out how many we count in. Now remember, those are calculations that we can do in um, SQL. Those, those aggregate functions, we can do an average, we can do a min, we can do a max, we can do a sum, and we can do a count. Those are the main ones that they expect you to know. But the key one about a count is a count can work on any field or all fields. It doesn't matter whether it's numbers or letters or whatever, or text. Where the other ones, the average, the min, the max, and the sum, they can only work on f on fields that have numbers in it. So we're just counting. So that makes it nice and easy. So we're going to count, and we're going to make that count boys doing ball skills. So we basically, if I go to my SQL query here, we can count any field if we want. So we're going to select the count of any field. But normally when we do a count, it's probably best just to do the star which means count how many there are, count star, and that's going to be as boys, now if I remember correctly, how do they want to display? Boys doing ball skills. So boys doing ball skills. I want to put that in square brackets just so that it recognizes that whole piece of text as the label for that field. And we're getting that information from the children table. And they basically want us to count all the children, how many boys have enrolled to do ball skills. Now here's where my, the other mistake in this question is. Here, if you look at the answer, the answer is 12. Now if you go to the database, you'll realize that the answer isn't actually 12. And if you look at the memo um, for this paper, you'll also see that they don't actually work out how many boys are. They just work out how many of the, of the children have ball skills. So in this question, I'm going to do it the proper way where we actually find out how many kids have ball skills and which of those kids are boys. So there's that extra criteria. For us, before we get to that, let's just look what the ball skills looks like. If I go up to what the table looks like, do you see ball skills could be anywhere in the extra activities field? Could be in the beginning, it could probably be at the end. We're not 100% sure because they, they comma separate the, the activities. There's a possibility that it could be at the beginning or at the end. So let's go back to our question here. We're going to go where extra activities, so there's, here's where our where clause comes in. Not too many E's. Where extra activities, and hopefully I'll spend this right. We can't say equals ball skills, remember, because it could be anywhere in the beginning or at the end. So we need to use the like f um, function here. Like, and we put our double quotes in, and we want ball skills, and we want anything before the ball skills. So we put the percentage sign in front, and we want anything after the ball skills. Percentage sign at the end. Percentage sign. There we go. But that, if we run it just like that, you'll see we'll probably get that answer of 12. You see, but that actually isn't finding all of the boys as they should specified in the memo. In the question, they actually want only the boys. So we actually got to add another criteria if we're going to do this question properly. And this is where I feel an extra mark to make it out of five marks should come. Um, and so we need to check if the gender, now let's just double check if it's what the name of that field is, if gender equals an M. And if we do it properly, and we go, and gender equals an M. Now, that's a text field, so we put double quotes around it. If we run it now, we should probably, I think it's 7 is the correct answer. If you look in the database, the correct answer is 7. So that's the actual way you should do it. So when you look at the memorandum for this paper, if you look at it at the government one, just take note that that actually isn't correct in the mem memorandum. So even the examiners can make mistakes. 1.6 now is a, a question where it's not a select. You'll expect one of the questions not to be a select statement. It'll either be an insert, an update, or a delete. In this case, we must complete the code in the new pupil to add a new pupil. So this is an insert. And we should know that the basic structure of an insert, there's the button 6, is we insert 
into the field or the table that we are going to be inserting. So we insert a new pupil into the children ta uh, table. So we'll say children TB. Then we got to specify what we are putting there. Now, there are two ways of doing that. We can specify the field names in brackets after the name of the table and then say the values followed by what we want to put into those fields. So I could have name and then I would have what the name is. Or we can take that away completely as long as we put it in the correct order over here as it is in the database. So I'm probably going to do that that way. So just to make sure, we, if you go to our child or children's table, we can see it's child ID, their name, surname, date of birth, gender, allergies, extra activity. So let's go over a look. And that pretty much follows that set up over there. So we're just going to insert into children TB the values. The first one is a number which is going to be a 23. So that's the name. Obviously when we click on this button we're not going to be able to click on it again because I'm assuming 23 the child ID is a primary key so we can't insert two fields with the same primary key. So we can insert 23. The, the, the girl's name is Rebecca. It's a very different spelling of Rebecca, and remember it's text, so we'll put in double quotes. Her surname is White, so that's also in text. Um, the next field will be her date of birth. Now, if you look there, there you can see her date of birth. Um, because it's a date field, um, you could put hashes around it, or you can just type it like it is. So I'm going to put it here first, slash 04, slash 02. I hope that's all the correct values. Um, the next field is gender, and she's a female, so that's text as well. Um, the next field is a yes or no field, and so we put in a no in, so let's just try and see if no works. If that doesn't work, then you can always try a true or false version of it. And then last but not least, it's cooking is fun. Cooking is fun. I enjoy cooking. So cooking is fun. So there we go. As I said, we don't need to actually have that second set of brackets there where you specify the field. The only time you would do that is if you were inserting values into a table and you didn't have all the information. So if we were only inserting these four fields, then I would have to have insert into children in brackets here. Child ID, comma name, comma surname, comma date of birth bracket. So that it knows that the first element there must go into the field that's mentioned first there. The second element there must go into the first or well, second field mentioned there but in this case because we insert in everything we can just write it like that and that follows the order that it is in the database now when we do when we do one of these inserts deletes or updates we can't actually do this whole query is true and all that jazz um, it's actually quite mean of them that they haven't done it for us we actually got to use the the query component that we've got there but now we're going to execute SQL and then once it's done, then I'm actually going to write some more SQL just to make sure that we can test to see that it's done. I think they actually ask us to do that. Display the table once all the information has been inserted. So let's actually do that. So I'm actually going to make SQL.txt. I'm going to change it to display select star from the children TV. Okay, just like that. Or I should probably put the single quotes around there, not the double quotes. Like that. So there's my query and then set it to true and hopefully that'll work. Let's run new people. Oh, there's a problem with my insert. Now, there's a problem with my insert, so let's have a look and see if there's anything incorrect there. I've got a funny feeling it's this no over here. I think because it's a field that's a true or false, it doesn't actually need to be a text field. You can either put true or false or yes or no. Um, it should work without the double quotes there. So let's see. Actually, my program's still running, so let's reset it. Let's try it this time. New people. Still a problem. Oh, there's still something wrong with my code. So let's have a look. Ah, remember when I told you about the... Other uh, scenario, I left those brackets there, so let's take it out there. So hopefully it'll work now. Please work. There we go. And if we go down to child RD23, there we go. We've got Rebecca White. Okay. So there we go. That one's done. 
Um, the first two questions have probably taken, or these first two questions of this video have taken longer than I expected. So I'm going to stop here for this video. I'm going to do the next two questions in part three. So in part three, we'll, con we'll tackle 1.7 and 1.8.